So tell me about bee stings. Well, the first thing that you have to worry about is whether or not a person is allergic to bee stings. Uh, there's a certain percentage of the population, about 3% of the people, are allergic to bee stings, and about a little less than 1% have true anaphylaxis to bee stings, which can be life-threatening. So if you're allergic to bee stings or you start having symptoms of an allergy, particularly anaphylactic symptoms like trouble breathing, wheezing, swelling of the face and neck, um, you immediately call 911 because that could be life-threatening. But for most people, it's a localized reaction. And so the first thing is to remove the stinger as soon as possible because the stinger has some venom in it that's not all immediately released. It releases over about two to three minutes. So as soon as you're stung, you look and pull out the venom. There's a little sac uh, associated with the stinger and pull that out. Uh, the next thing is, for, in my experience, is to apply meat tenderizer. So you take some unseasoned meat tenderizer, mix it with water, make it into a paste, and apply it in sort of a circle, circular gentle motion to the area. The idea is that the meat tenderizer has an enzyme that will break down some of the proteins in the venom. Uh, if you don't have meat tenderizer, then the next choice would be toothpaste. Really, this isn't going to minimize the inflammation, but it just makes it feel better because toothpaste is alkaline and bee stings are acidic. And so for a bee sting, if you rub some toothpaste on it, most toothpaste, also some toothpastes have glycerin, which might help break down the uh, venom. This is not the case for wasp stings. Wasp stings are alkaline themselves. And so for wasp stings, vinegar makes them feel better right away. That's all I've got. Great, thank you.